اهلا بيكم السيشن القادمه او اول سيشن يعني هتكون عن البيلدنج انستيتيوشنز وبيسرنا انه بيرأس هذه اللجنه الزميل العزيز والاخ الجميل دكتور نجيب الخاجه هي سكرتير جنرال اوف شيخ حمدان بن راشد المكتوم اوورد فور ميديكال ساينسز شكرا جزيلا اخي العزيز محمد الفحام الحقيقه اشكركم على هذه الدعوه الكريمه الى مكتبه الاسكندريه اللي اسعد بزيارتها في كل اجتماع من اجتماعات تواس ارو الحقيقه انا ايضا سعيد جدا اني اتواجد في هذا المكان اللي يعتبر رمز من رموز مصر الكبرى في العلم والثقافة وأستمتع بحضور المحاضرة الجميلة اللي يلقيها في كل مرة أستاذنا الكبير إسماعيل سراج الدين اللي يفتح يعني عقولنا على ما يحدث سواء في مصر أو في العالم العربي وما نحتاج إليه من أجل أن نتغير ونتطور كما نعلم جميعا أن العالم العربي يمر ما زال يمر في مرحلة صعبة ومصر أم الدنيا إحدى هذه الدول التي مرت وتمر في هذه التغيرات هناك أوقات صعبة لكن هناك متغيرات مهمة البعض يراها أنها إيجابية والآخرين يروها أنها سلبية لكن الحقيقة هناك حاجة للتغيير والحاجة للتغيير يجب أن يعمل عليها الجميع كل أفراد المجتمع بكل فئاته وأطيافه لكن المسؤولية الكبرى كما سمعنا جميعا تقع على أهم شيء على عاتق مثقفيها وعلماءها وأنتم راية هذه الدولة وهذه الأمة أن نحن كعلماء ومثقفين نحمل هذه الراية من مصر وفي كل دول العالم إسماعيل سراج الدين يعني أعطانا نبذة أين نحن وأعطانا نبذة واضحة أين العالم ويجب أن نضع هذا في اعتبارنا في كل أعمالنا وتصرفاتنا أن تطور الأمم يبنى على تطور العلم فإن شاء الله تبقى مكتبة الإسكندرية ومصر رائدة في هذا المجال وإن شاء الله نشوف العلم هو الذي يسود بدل منطق القوة والعنف إخواني أيضا أنا سعيد أن التواس أرو اختارت في هذه المرة موضوع مهم Research and Innovation for Sustainable Development development in the in the arab region وانا سعيد اني انا ادير هذه الجلسه في اول جلسه من جلسات هذا اللقاء واللي يبدا بموضوع building institution institution بناء المعاهد بناء المؤسسات وامامي ثلاث زملاء ومحاضرين مميزين والحقيقة أن السي في لكل إخواني الزملاء يعني غني جدا بالمعلومات نبدأ بالمحاضرة الأولى اللي سيعطيني إياها البروفيسور عابدين صالح اللي هو بروفيسور of civil engineering في نعم كفاية كده يعني كفاية ما دابوا يتكلم لكن هو يعني شخص مميز في هذا المجال وانا سعيد ان اعطي يعني الميكروفون ان يتحدث عن جيرني فروم ذا فيليج تو ذا جلوبال ووتر سيكتور ترايب تفضل تفضل الاخوه الاعزاء الابناء وبناتنا الكرام سعيد ان اكون هنا في مكتب الاسكندريه لهذا الاجتماع اللي بيحدث في نهايه كل عام And I will speak in English in the United States of Africa. And I switched to English. And uh, when I, they asked me to talk about this uh, uh, aspect, 
I thought it will be in a small place and we talked together, so I didn't prepare anything. I asked just my daughter in the Sudan to see all photographs which can reflect part of the things which I will share with you. But uh, in any case, and then I, had, I, I was put in this very disadvantage to talk after, after my uh, uh, two uh, friends and colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Adil Beltegi and, uh, and uh, our uh, uh, chair of the Alexandria Library, and so uh, the Dr. Sirajeddin, and with their very nice photographs and nice presentation. I, if I knew that I would be in this occasion, I would have uh, done that. But in any case, I will share with you really my story, which is a very simple story really. And, but I thought it is for our younger uh, uh, daughters and, uh, and sons in this meeting. But in any case, it is good even the elders to be here with us. Uh, my uh, uh, story started that I was, was born in a very humble, uh, small village at the Blue Nile, not very far from Madani and Jazeera scheme. In fact, in the eastern part, we are not part of the scheme, it's the eastern part of the river, the scheme in the western, but not far from Madani. I, in fact, the school was opened after uh, five years of my birth, and my father helped in building that school, so they put me in the school at four years or four years and a half. It was a subgrade school at that time. At that time, we were under the British colonization, so the school was three years school. They call it subgrade. And so I went to the school. For me, it was very difficult, you know. I was helping my father uh, related to the area where I was uh, born. My father was uh, uh, a sort of a business ma man with some uh, things, I mean, other properties and things. So related to the people of that community, he is the, <coughs> so he helped in building that school. And so I was put with some who are really much older than myself. I mean, there are 12, 13, 14, and so it was a difficult time for me. And I found very difficult time when they taught us mathematics. There are problems which they say, so and so, both so and so. فَكَمَلْ بَاغِي لَهُ in Arabic. I mean, when you, this was to me was very difficult. Though I was helping my father even at three or four in the shop, and I know when you pay something and you buy something, you give back. So my father explained this thing to me in a very simple way, and I think he was my first teacher. And from that time, I liked mathematics. I think I wasn't bad, and, and then mathematics became something which I loved very much. I went from the three years, they took us to another school. They used to call it that Rasen in Arabic. It is, it is, they take us, those on, after three years in subgrade schools in different places, to that school which is in a very far place where I'm living very far from my family. It was a very difficult time. I didn't like it. But anyway, I said, I think also mathematics helped me because with mathematics you can always be on the top. And then, then we went to a, an intermediate school also in boarding hall and those three years also in boarding hall uh, uh, places with boarding not a very high standard really at the age of, you know, seven or eight and I'm away from my family. And, and then we went to the secondary school in Medani, which is a big uh, city in there. It's also it was a change and it was also to me, uh, I mean, you wouldn't know. I mean, my dream is to be a teacher in fact and to have a bicycle. I noted one of the teacher has a very nice bicycle and I thought this could have been the end of it. But also unfortunately or fortunately, mathematics continued with me and I was lucky in mathematics. There are more clever, I was in the Ferris in the school, in the secondary school, but certainly in the mathematics I was the top. Even the teacher was angry, one of the teachers, I think he was an Egyptian teacher, that I got 100% in, in mathematics. And he said, this is the last time in your life to get 100%. Anyway, I went to the university, I wrote engineering because I thought this is mathematics. So I entered mathematics in the intermediate in our university, University of Khartoum used to be a very uh, high level university at our time. And then in the university also part, uh, I, in the intermediate, they took two persons. We used to have engineering for six years. You have two, two years, you study like equivalent to A level in fact. And uh, in the intermediate, they took a couple of my colleagues, including Mohammed Hassan from Tuas, if one of you knows he is my uh, classmate and friend for many years. So they, they went to England to continue their studies in mathematics. I refused to go because I prefer to go to engineering, not because I know very much about engineering. So we went to engineering. 
The first year, you have to select after that in those remaining four years between civil, mechanical. Also, nobody tell you what is it. I prefer civil also because some of my friends, in fact, in the first year, they took a group of students to send them outside to UK also to do chemical engineering. And I was about to do that. Then I changed my mind, I mean, and I noted all my good friends, they went to civil, let us go to civil. And, and this is where really I entered in this field. Anyway, in the civil also, in the civil engineering, and I remember we used to have external examiner, and then the dean used to bring me with the external examiner from the second year and telling him this is so and so, we would like to send him to study to do PhD in water. And also this is for me hydraulics and, and, and water is something uh, you know. Anyway, but I think close to the end of the university time, I started to realize the different subjects. And then in water, I want to see, I used to see videos from somebody called Hunter Rouse, used to be in Iowa University. At that time, it was videos where you put them and see, and explain fluid mechanics, how the things, and it was so fond up on that things. And I decided if I go for the study then further, I would go to Iowa in order to work with this guy, who later on really moved to, to uh, Arizona. But our external exam, we used to have a system of external examiner. Our examiner was from Liverpool University. And then he said, uh, Imperial College in London is really better than any university in the States. Of course, this is as you expect, being a British also himself and things. And then he went, not only that, he, this is in the last year, he spoke with the professor of uh, hydraulics and fluid mechanics at Imperial College, Professor Francis, and he told him there is a candidate. And he wrote, in fact, he wrote to my dean telling him that I heard so and so would he come. So I went really, it was chance which put you in that there. So I went to Imperial College. One of my professor, an Egyptian professor who came to Khartoum in 1949, Professor Shoki. And, he, and after, for six months, after the six months, he said he would like to go back. And then they begged him and begged him and he stayed, but then he never go to, went to Egypt again till he died, Professor Shoghi said. And uh, so Professor Shoghi said, well, if you are going for a structure at Imperial College, I wouldn't have really been worried about But to go and do uh, hydraulics there and water resources and things, he was so worried about me, but in any case, it was also a very, you know, going to a new world for the first time also. Our children now, they can see, you can see yourself a lot of things in the uh, system which uh, uh, Dr. Ismail Sirayuddin spoke about. Our time, no. There are even television it started to appear. You know. So I went to Imperial College in 1969 and uh, to England, to London. This is the whole weather, the whole thing. I was, uh, at the beginning, I was so depressed. But then I accepted the challenge. I mean, and then the professor was so much biased to a colleague with me from Sri Lanka. Come and come, because he has experience with those, but no experience with anybody from our part of the world. Not only that, the professor was so excited about a student from Israel. That was in 69th, just after the, uh, and then he took him. Do you believe it or not? We have a student from Israel with that. And I got so angry, you know, about that. And, and then there are two Palestinians students with us and other Arabs, but I, I poked the thing down. I went to him, I told him, look here, but there are students from other places. This is my professor. I mean, if you challenge a professor like this at that time, then you end it. Anyway, I think I, I, I managed, then he gave me, uh, then he asked me one time, you don't bring anything, you don't, I told him because you don't ask me about anything. Then he said, uh, go to the lab and do experiment in so and so for uh, uh, a broad crusted wear, how it behave with scouring and sing, sing in that field. But, I, but the good thing he put me, I was registered for a, a diploma of Imperial College, but he put me with the masters to start courses. And the teachers who taught us, they were very uh, happy with me and I, I developed the, the professor himself. I think he put me in his mind. And then I worked that experiment, uh, which he did. And then I asked one of the teachers, what is that? He said, no, what you are doing is almost a master level. In fact, we published it with, together with this professor. In, in, and then he turned, 
180 degrees after six months, I became his favorite student. And, and those people are really very fair. I mean, I became, and then he started apologizing. I remember at that time, there was a lot of attack on Egypt and on the high dam and on uh, President Nasser and things. And I was a little bit very uh, supportive of uh, President Nasser at that time and things like that. And I was so angry. And then one day he called me. And he said, you know, those people are from the time and they want me to make a model for the high dam to show that it is a failure and things like this. And I told him no. So he wanted to tell me that he's not against <laughs> my part of the world. And, and anyway, it was a good period. Uh, I, I think it shows also how fair those people. I mean, after a while, I got really my, my PhD in a, in a record time. I finished my PhD in a, in, a, in, a, in a record time. And then by uh, uh, 71 or something like this, I went 69. By 71, he told me, stop. I mean, I, I was doing an experimental work on fast water flow. And then I showed that in a fast flow in Agni, that air bubbles could run faster than the water in accelerated flow. And they do the opposite. And I showed him the thing experimentally. Then he laughed. He became, by, by that time, very uh, close to me and very fond of me, the professor, Professor Francis. Then he told me, no, this reminds me of Professor so-and-so. He said so-and-so, and I was very angry. So I went and I solved the problem mathematically. And then I took it to him. And then he told me, look here. I cannot judge that, but you go to Professor so-and-so in mathematics. Fluid mechanics at Imperial College were taught in different colleges, in mechanical, in mathematics, in aeronautics, and, but in a different way. So I went to the mathematics professor, and he looked at it, and he told me, I will give you a PhD for this. And he called him. And then he told me, stop writing. Anyway, that was the education. When I went back to the university, my university of Khartoum, and uh, in fact, they took me with them in the staff. But at one time, I came to the, to, 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 and we used to prepare experiment. Imperial College was very rich at the time. We, may, we teach fluid mechanics and hydraulic spheres experimentally to the students. And then an incident with the student showed me I need to serve my country back. And then I told France, Professor Francis that my family need me. And I, I think I made a good decision. By January 1973, I went back to my university. And then I have to taught everything, hydraulics, fluid mechanics, uh, name it. But uh, the, 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 my, my knowledge was in 1974, I found a chance to go to Italy, to Padua, to the International Center for Hydrology. And so I have hydraulics, hydrology, I have to teach in, uh, irrigation, I have to teach uh, 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 sanitary engineering, and all the subjects of, uh, of, of water. This is the education. In the university, I, I, I think also the, the, the chances to publish was many. But because I'm from a university far from Europe, not many they publish for you easily. One of the things which I found is the difficulty of, pub of uh, publishing the, uh, in, 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 except when I went to sabbatical to Colorado State University. And by that time, with the name of Colorado State University, most of the papers which I sent with no answer, they were published in very international journals. I mean, all the IHR journal, uh, Journal of Irrigation and Drainage, and so on. So which shows that also you need really to be somewhere where really your word could be uh, heard and could be uh, done. Uh, at the same time, also, I started to see that we cannot, yeah, and in Colorado, I helped, I went as a visiting scientist. And by that time, I was an associate professor and things like this. And, but I started to gather around me also the African students, the Arab students. And I think I made a network, including even from Egyptians, colleagues in here, and from most of the African countries who were at the time at Colorado University as students. I used to help them and to gather them. Because by that time also, in 1974, I wrote to the international uh, at IHR, International Association for Hydraulic Research. And I told them there is an, an Asian division. There is a, a European division. There is a Latin America. Why not an African division? And then uh, I, I made, I remember, uh, uh, I, have, I did some work with some consulting firm in, in Holland, and the IHR secretariat was in Delft. And then they asked me, OK, come while you are there and let us talk. The secretary is there in Delft Hydraulics at the time. Now it's called Delta Daris. So I went there, 
And then I told with them, and they told me, because there are not many Africans who are specialized in this field or who can read even our journal. And I told them this is not convincing to me. And then they told me those who do those things, they have a conference in UNESCO in Paris. That was in 75, something like this. At that time, things are easy, really. So I changed my plan. I was going, plan. I was going to England with my newly married with my wife, and changed my tickets to Paris. And the meeting was in UNESCO at that time. And I met two guys, Professor Garbage and, uh, and Professor De Vries from Holland. Garbage told me the only thing to do is to start a conference in Africa. Uh, De Vries will say it is very difficult. Anyway, we managed to do that, to do the uh, conference after two years in, in, uh, in Nairobi. And then we, we, I managed after so many years after that, they asked me to be uh, a member, a co-opted member to Asian and Pacific Division of the IHR. And anyway, at the end, we managed to establish the African IHR uh, division. And I think it was a, a great work. And then they asked me to be the founding and the first president. And then it passed. After that, it passed to Egypt. And I think we did a good work. Professor, the late Professor Yasser from the Hydraulic Research Station in, in, in Qanatir, we managed to get a, a project funded by the Dutch for training, which is continuing till now. In fact, on the Nile, and this is a different took shapes, but with, with funds from the, the, and I think this is one of the institutions which I'm also very uh, proud uh, uh, of. Uh, secondly, also after the University of Khartoum, and at one time, which was very difficult, you start in the, I was the head of the civil engineering department in 78, 79, you find that you start in the queue for petrol, you go for queue. And then I, I, I thought I was good for nobody. And, and I went to University of King's Wood University in Riyadh. And I think during this period, what I'm, 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 I'm proud of it may be the training of people. And even in Khartoum, before I left Khartoum, also water in the university was not taken seriously. I think well, I, I, I managed to train. I remember one of the stories which I could mention is that Professor Nash from Ireland came and visited me in my department. And he, tell, he said, I want to get some good uh, student to go for master in, in Galway, in his university in Ireland. And I told him, you are, and I'm going to the Ministry of Irrigation in Medani to see. I told him, I can give you some from the university who are very proud, they, uh, very bright, and then they would be training of trainers. They train those you are going to visit in. He told me, you sell your good very well. If I come back in, after four days, would you find? I told him, yes. I can find for you three. And then I wrote a strong letter to the deputy vice chancellor. And I told him that water is very important and so and so. And I, I managed to get from him four uh, post as teaching assistants, because this is the requirement which that guy, Professor Nash, would like to have. And after four days, we come and then I look for the results those who are bright, who graduated and working somewhere. And I gathered the three for him, and, 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 he, and after two weeks, they went to Galway, and I think they all did their PhDs and masters, and they are still in the department till now. A fourth one was also, is, I, I took him earlier, and I sent him to Colorado State University. And then after that, in the two years, I took two persons, I sent them to France. That was in the 70s, and I think they made the core. And I'm so happy that they all remain, in fact, in the department. I think we have a very strong group till now, and they established now a water research center. And I think this is the same thing I did when I went to Riyadh. When I went to Riyadh, to King Saud, at that time it used to be called Riyadh University, and then they changed it while we were there to King Saud University. And, uh, and then I thought we, all of us were foreigners who are teaching. And then I started to select the right one. And I think the four now who are really, one of them became a vice chancellor or a rector of a university. They are also still there. And this is what I like. I like really training. The same thing for this IHR. I thought that the African cannot pay the dues for being members of IHR or to pay the journal. I think what I did, then I became member of the council of IHR. And then I told them, look here, let us establish a fund, not only for us in Africa, but for all those who cannot pay. And then we established what we, they call it a special fund. And by that time, we have about 50 or 60. And I'm happy that the IHR now is there. It started in Khartoum, it came to Egypt here under Professor Yasser, who did a fantastic work. Now it is led in South Africa and leading the research successfully. Uh, the, also, some important station in my, in my life is the UNESCO. 
1993 also, I was the, in 19 or 1991, I was appointed as the deputy uh, vice chancellor of the University of Khartoum, something which I didn't like, it was forced on me, and then I told him, okay, since this came from the president and thing, I will accept it, but you have three months to find a replacement. This so three months became one and a half year. But by that time I left. Then I left and I came, I think, theoretically sabbatical with Dr. Abouzaid, Mahmoud Abouzaid, who is a good friend of mine for years. I mean, family friend and a great friend. And, and then we, uh, in name, but I was traveling by that time myself and him on water all over the world. And, uh, and, and, and so I left that, uh, that position. And then suddenly my friends in UNESCO, which at that time I was an advisor to UNESCO because we started with the sixth person who started the fifth phase of the International Hydrological Program of UNESCO, I was one of them. And then they told me there is a position in Cairo now for uh, the UNESCO advisor for water, and in, uh, water in the Arab region. Uh, yeah. Would you be interested? I told them it is okay. And that was from 1993 to 1998, where I enjoyed a good time in here. And I think with the support of, uh, at that time, the Minister Abdel Hadi Radi, alayhi rahmatullah, and Dr. Mahmoud Abu Zaid in the research center, and Professor Ghassas, alayhi rahmatullah, even was in charge, a great, one of the greatest pillars of our region, really, Professor Ghassas and Professor Abu Zaid and Abdel Hadi. And we managed really to use the funds available here from different things for the region. And we established two strong network. One of them is the network for Wadi Hydrology, because I thought we are in a region with uh, water scarcity and how to cope with it. And wadis are really places where we can make them a lot and benefit from their water. And I think we established this thing, the meeting was in Jordan. Maybe I will show some photographs showing that. And I am happy uh, that this network, together with another wet work in groundwater protection, and we gave the coordination to this uh, net to, to, to to uh, uh, Dr. Fatma, who used to be the director of the Groundwater Institute, in one of the fantastic ladies. They always would say that Dr. Fatma equal a thousand <laughs> person, which is. And I think those two networks, they did a good work, and they, uh, they were existing till two years ago when we changed it to a, a big uh, a part of a global network called GWADI. That is global, global network for water information system in Arizona. And I think they did a good work. I think in Cairo also one of the good things which we did during that period is the establishment of the Arab the Arab uh, Biosphere Network, the Arab Map Network, which is uh, another program in ecology of UNESCO, and I'm happy that this network is, is still there. We managed also to establish a, a Category 2 center in, uh, in, 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 in 6 October on water, which is still uh, existing. Uh, and I think that was a very rich period, but unfortunately the Director General asked me to come to Paris as the Deputy Director of the Water Division in Paris. And I remember Professor Ghassas wrote to him a strong letter, and he said, why did you take him from here? And, and, uh, and, 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 and that was another period where a lot of things has been done. Okay. Time. Okay, then I, I think I may, I, I, I may conclude that in UNESCO, I have different faces in UNESCO in here, and in Paris also we established a couple of institutes and centers in various places, but then they took me at one time, the Director General asked me to establish a new sub-regional office in Tehran. As that included Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and, uh, and Turkmenistan, and it's just short of uh, and all the countries. And I think also many similar things were established, and I'm so happy that uh, Dr. Ismail Sarayeddin spoke about how Iran was progressing. And I would have talked for two, uh, talked for two hours about how this thing happened. And I remember in UNESCO, they asked me to bring for them Muhatir Muhammad. And then I, we contacted him as UNESCO because they established science park. They link the research with the incubators, with production. And not only in one place. It started in Asfahan. In my five years there, they have five of such type of things. And this is how they develop their, their science. Anyway, we brought Mahathir Muhammad. And he spoke before me like I am unlucky also to have uh, the, the, my colleagues uh, uh, talking before me, the other two guys. In half an hour, he said uh, well, the thing which I will not forget, of course, because this is an Islamic country. He said the Islamic countries miss the Industrial Revolution. I hope that they will not miss the information 
revolution. Anyway, there are a couple of photographs which show different of those stations, which, in fact, this is a particular one with Dr. Yasir and Dr. Rashid Sabit, an Egyptian uh, with Dutch things, and Dr. Rashid Yasir. This is when we went with funds from the Dutch to establish this training course, which I told you for the 10 countries of Africa, which is continuing up to Jai. This is also in the equator with Dr. Yasir and Dr. Uh, Yasir. This is where we started talking about the an African IH, uh, IHR things, and I think it was in, in Kenya. This is when I was doing my PhD in London. This is I, uh, one meeting of uh, the, the World Water Council with Dr. Abu Zaid as his president. In, uh, this is also in the Netherlands, The Hague, where we are doing. This is the IHR Council in, in, in uh, this is when I was in Saudi Arabia, a farewell party. This is when I was the president of the international, after I retired from UNESCO, they elected me as the president of the international hydraulical uh, program of UNESCO for two years. This is when we, when I enter UNESCO, you have to do a sort of a, this is some of the activities in Egypt, Dr. Abu Zaid and Thank other guys. Thank you very much, doctor. Okay. You okay. gave an excellent lecture, so let us give a chance okay. to others. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Our uh, next speaker will be uh, Professor Abdel Nasser Tawfiq, who is a founder and member of civil institutions and organizations, and he is a, a fellow of TWAS, published more than 85 research papers, and uh, he will talk to us now about prospects for nuclear science research in Egypt. Please go. Okay, okay thank you very much. Uh, just to be short, I will... I will just give you a very short reflection about my life. I started, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an upper Egyptian, yeah, born in Sohag. I started my study there. Um, at that time, I was very much oriented to, to be specialized in atomic physics. Uh, even when, when, I, when I get my high school degree, it was a fight in my family to, to apply for the School of Medicine, but I refused. I just said, no, I will study, at that time, uh, nuclear physics. I did it in, in Sohag, then I also um, finished my master's degree there. At the time, uh, we were at Sohag, it was a very young university. The staff there, I mean, the, the, the faculty member, many of them were just uh, part-timers, uh, came, uh, came from, uh, from Cairo. It was a very difficult time to study or to learn um, the, uh, the, the, the new topic of nuclear science. Uh, therefore, I was looking for PhD uh, in a foreign country. I was not thinking of Germany. I was thinking of England or US. But uh, at the time, the available scholarship was a German one. I did apply, and I did apply, and I got a scholarship. I went there. I spent um, uh, a couple of years for the PhD. Then I also remained in Germany, working at different German university for about six or seven years. In 2007, six, uh, seven, I decided to come back to Cairo. At that time, it was very difficult to come back. I was looking for a change in the society, change in the science, because I was suffering that the, uh, the, um, the teacher, I mean, which I have had, um, didn't have time to offer us uh, um, guidance or, or supervision. Yeah. Also, the uh, access to journals, everything was very, was very difficult. Yeah. Um, I decided to come back to Cairo uh, or to, to Egypt, yeah, and I was looking for my old university, the Asit University, to establish a new uh, platform to do this scientific research according to the, uh, the international standard. Yeah, it was very difficult, you know, you can imagine that. Then I have to take this decision to, to quit the university because it's, I, I couldn't cope with it. Yeah. Uh, but I was um, insisting to remain in Egypt. Um, you can imagine that time was very difficult, yeah. But at that time, we, we have had uh, a new wave of uh, private universities, yeah. And I looked for, I looked at, I looked at the, the different universities in Cairo. At the end, I um, decided to re remain or to work for the modern university for technology uh, and information because I uh, realized that I can. I can uh, implement my dream to establish the Egyptian Center for Theoretical Physics, which is now seven uh, years old, did a lot of, of, uh, of progresses, uh, organized many international conferences. We are now a partner of different international um, institutions. 
and we are the first Egyptian institution which is classified by TWAS as a center of excellence. Uh, we can run the program of associateship program which allows us to invite former, uh, former uh, professors to spend up to three months uh, in, in Cairo. Um, and we also um, running other, other, um, other programs, yeah. But today I'm not, going, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to talk about this ECTB, this Egyptian Center for Theoretical Physics, but about another institution, which also uh, I have the, uh, I, I also established, the World Laboratory for Cosmology and Particle Physics. Okay. Um, just, I will give you some, um, uh, some, um, history about this World Laboratory because it is part of an international organization called World Rab Laboratory. Um, then I will give some examples about uh, the founding scientists and institutions and the general agreement which we have signed with this uh, international uh, organization which is located in Geneva in Switzerland. Um, then I will move uh, to uh, how we uh, to, to explain you how we, 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 we was planning it, how we establish it, and how we are running it. And I will, get, I will sh uh, just um, uh, view you the vision, mission, objectives of its and its member. Then I will switch to the another part of my talk, which is about the, um, which is about the, uh, it's the, the title of the talk is the Perspective for Nuclear Science Research in Egypt. I'm responsible for this in Egypt, and we have, we have achieved many things here. Okay, just now about the WL cap. Uh, the great father is, uh, is one which is less, not less than Dirac himself here. Yeah. Dirac is also was engaged to, uh, to establish this world laboratory and with another, uh, another, uh, another uh, Nobel laureate is uh, uh, Kabitsa and a good friend of mine, Antonio Sikiki, which is now a minister in Sicily. The history is started uh, by uh, establishing the so-called International Center for Scientific Culture in Eritrea, in Italy. This is done by Batsikiki. And in the 80s of, uh, of the last century, there was uh, the so-called Eritrea Statement, uh, signed by Dirac, uh, Kapitza, Tsukiki, and many other, uh, other scientists. Now, now we, we, the number of, of scientists who signed this statement here yeah, is more than 20,000. Um, uh, in July 1986, this, the World Laboratory was established in Geneva by a group of eminent scientists who are now the uh, member, or at the time who were member of the, the so-called World Federation for Scientists, which is, is now existing and running a very embracing, uh, very, uh, um, very, uh, a, a very good, uh, programs, yeah. Uh, just a few uh, examples about the founding scientists. You can see many of them, uh, even Nobel laureate, including Salam and many others. Uh, the founding institution, we can see the academy, uh, different, uh, different academy, for example, the African Academy of Science. Uh, today in the morning, I was happy to sit next to the uh, executive pro pro uh, president of the African Academy of Science, but you can see at the, uh, also the, uh, the, uh, the TWAS, the TWAS also supporting the WL cap, uh, sorry, the, uh, the World, the, the world uh, Laboratory. Here the countries who, are, who have uh, general agreement with this uh, World Laboratory, including Egypt. Uh, uh, the main project, we have five main projects, uh, uh, which we are running in, uh, uh, under the, um, under the World Laboratory, the main idea, the philosophy of this organization is that um, it, it understands itself not as a funding institution only, but also as a research institution. I mean, it, the, the, the institution finds money, funds for the research, and the funds run, uh, 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 the research is, is, uh, should, be, should, be, should be done by the scientists affiliated to this organization itself according to the international standard, which I will, go, I will just uh, uh, outline. Uh, there are different groups. For example, there's a group for uh, seismological, nuclear, chemical, meteorological, and so on. There's another group for technology and basic science, which is, uh, uh, to which we are affiliated as the WCAP. There's another also a group 
uh, working for ancient civilization and environment, uh, a, a fourth group for uh, new technology and safe, clean, renewable energy, and so on. The, the last one for um, transfer of scientific and technological know-how. This is very important, yeah. Um, okay. okay. Um, the, uh, um, under the umbrella of the World Laboratories, there are 30, uh, 30 World Laboratories around the world. <coughs> you can see here the map of the world. The, uh, the, the countries, the red countries are, red countries are, are countries with general agreement and the other one with, uh, I mean, general agreement with, with, with centrals yeah, it's, it's, uh, in, in it. Yeah. Uh, just here example of, the, uh, of, the, of these institutions you can see. Okay, and the WCAB is the, re the recent one, the most recent one, it's the Egyptian one. It's, okay, um, how we started it, it's, it's uh, I mean, I, I have to thank uh, many friends, including Paolo Giappellino and Antonio Sikiki, and we have to make many, a uh, lot of uh, meetings and present many things how we are uh, able to run such a new institution. The vision is that uh, creating a self-financing and sustainable research institution. And um, the ultimate goal is to have or to construct an, a scientific atmosphere in order to conduct scientific research. Yeah. Just people who would like to, to understand it in Arabic, you can see um, it. Um, the idea behind, behind, behind this, this plan was the foundation of Magdi Yaqub. I do admire him. And Abdul Salam himself. If, 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 if someone is going to visit me, you will, you, he will find two, two portraits in my office, one of Abdul Salam and one of Mahdi Yaqub. The main mission of this WLCAP establishing national platform for, uh, to, to perform scientific research, conducting scientific research in cosmology and particle physics, especially cooperating with counterparts, with counter institutions in Egypt, also outside, offering training for young researchers, constructing coherent uh, research group, and attracting world-class uh, world uh, scientists to participate in the act different activities. Yeah. Um, we have a program called National Scholarship Program, which is open to, to any um, Egyptian young uh, graduate. He, has, uh, he, has, he or she has to uh, have the Egyptian citizenship and um, finished his, uh, his, uh, his basic uh, study and um, with, with, with a good, uh, with a good uh, grade. Uh, he has or she or she should, should uh, have... Um, good command in English and uh, also has, has to work from the day one. Uh, how, it is in, in, uh, it is, uh, in, uh, how it is organized, uh, we, you have this, uh, the director, which is myself, and who, who is responsible for many things, yeah, uh, according to management, scientific research, financial control, and um, we also ad administration, administration of uh, uh, affairs. He, he has to report to the, uh, the inter to the international organization, and he has to guarantee that the, the funds which is coming to Egypt uh, spend it uh, properly, and also the scientific research are done according to the, the, uh, the scientific standards here. Uh, we have to report to the World Lab and even to the uh, World uh, Federation for, uh, for Scientists, and we get find for, uh, funds from them. Uh, accordingly, uh, everything is done as, as I said in Egypt. Members, uh, you can see here, just a few members here. Uh, just uh, now, I'm, I'll switch to the, 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 the second part of my talk, the perspective for nuclear science, uh, or nuclear science research in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about because I'm acting as PI, as an official representative of Egypt, uh, in front of different international organization as a director of WLCAB or also as, an, as a scientist. Um, why? I'm talking about nuclear science. We need colliders. Uh, Dr. Saragiddin today uh, flashed us a picture from the Atlas detector. It's one of the detectors which, which we are working for. Um, a collider is very expensive. We, we couldn't have one. Uh, we couldn't have e even part of them here. We couldn't e even, build e uh, e even build any part. But we, we can co uh, cooperate with ZB. We collaborate with, with this institution. Accordingly, we can, we, can, we can make benefit from it. I called it uh, Egyptian colliders, but it is just, just a vision, yeah? 
Um, we don't have Egyptian colliders, but we are part of the international colliders. Okay, the idea be uh, behind the whole uh, particle physics is to understand the origin of everything, to understand the, uh, the, uni the universe, how, how it started. Yeah. You can see the Big Bang, and after a fraction of, of a second, we, we have uh, different uh, phases of, of, of the matter. One of, uh, one of them, uh, at least we, 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 can we can study these phases yeah, using either astrophysics or particle physics. Yeah. The astrophysics allows us to study the the astrophysical objectives, or objects, yeah. But the collider, the particle physics, allows us to understand the, the, the deep instruction of the matter. Okay, to do this, we, we run uh, colliders. You can see from this graph that the, uh, the, astro, the, the astrophysics uh, covers uh, very little um, history of the universe, yeah. But the particle physics goes back to, to almost the origin of the universe, yeah, according to the energy, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to explain you the phase diagram, but this, this is our business, yeah. We have to understand how the matter behaves if we increase the temperature and if, if we increase the pressure. This is the idea. We, we are in, 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 in the bottom side here, uh, bottom corner here, in, where, where you can see the nuclei. Uh, if we increase the temperature or density using colliders, like you can see here, NICA, you can see FAIR, SIS, you can see REC, LHC, and so on, we go, uh, we, uh, we, can, we can understand the origin, how the, how, uh, which forces go governing the, the, uh, the matter, which constituents are, uh, are the, the matter have. Um, I mean, we can understand things. I think this very much. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, now we, we are here at very low temperature and low density. We are living here. If you increase the temperature to very high, uh, to, to very high uh, value here, if you, ca you cannot imagine how high is it, uh, it is 200 MAV. One electron volt equals 10,000 degrees. And if we, we, we get the same if we increase the density. Uh, the, the tools which enable, enables us to do this are these colliders here. Yeah, for example, NICA, FAIR, LHC, and so on. Okay. Uh, with LHC, we have also a cop. A cop we are co co cooperating with Egypt is now associate member of the CERN, which is the European, European Organization for Nuclear Physics. We are member of two experiments here. We are not working. We are member of the CMS and of uh, of Alice. Um, you can see the director of CMS is huge. You can compare it with the these two guys here are standing here. The huge director here. Okay, uh, we are also cooperating with another collider in US at this time, with the REC, which is a relativistic heavy ion collider. You can see it here. The, uh, the, the, this, this is, the tunnel here is very huge, it's 27 kilometers, the tunnel here. Here is the, tine, uh, the tunnel is, is a smaller one, but it's also huge, about a uh, couple kilometers, yeah. Okay. Um, I said we are member of, of Alice, we are member uh, of Alice at LHC, we are member of STAR at TREC, and we are almost member of another facility called NICA in, in Russia. Uh, two weeks ago I have to sign a protocol to join NICA in the name of, the name of Egypt, yeah? and we are going to work for this experiment, for this MPD experiment. Uh, furthermore, we are now negotiating with German people to join, its new, to join the new facility there called FAIR at GSI in Darmstadt, uh, where we are interested in, 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 in a concrete pro program uh, there, a program for baryon uh, material. Uh, these are four detectors, four facilities, which uh, are now, uh, or to which we are now affiliated or are co cooperating with. I'm just here showing you the location in the map. This is the Russian one, this is in Dobna. This is the German one, GSI in Darmstadt. And this is the CERN, the most famous one, Mecca of Barclay physicists, and also Brookhaven National Lab in the US. Uh, in future, also, we have planned to uh, cope with the future uh, particle uh, colliders. Uh, which are going to uh, which are going to west uh, to to east to east in this time to Russia or to Japan yeah we have many of them we have many plans of them for example the international linear collider and Japan is also constructing very very uh, sophisticated program at KEK there okay uh, again this is a phase diagram I'm, go I'm not going to explain it 
this is uh, the Alice experiment, which is located in, or is surrounded by this Large Hadron Collider. Uh, the physics of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Alice is very much related to, to understanding the origin of the universe, because it's, it's uh, the only LHC detector which is devoted to the heavy ion collider, uh, heavy ion collisions, yeah. And from the heavy ion collision, from the QCD matter, we can understand the, Q, uh, the QCD phase diagram, including the origin of our universe. Um, just, I'm not going to explain everything, it's uh, very much uh, in detail, See, but uh, as I said, it's heavy, heavy ion collider, at, uh, heavy ion collision at ultra relativistic energy, at, at, uh, and the amount of, of energy, of amount of data which we get is huge, and we are also participating in processing the data. Uh, Dr. Saragiddin explained to you how huge, or how, how massive are the data. We are part of this. We are doing this also. Um, Okay, um, we can understand, as I said, the uh, QCD matter, the, 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 the quantum chromodynamic matter, including the QGB, the quark gluon plasma matter, which is the next phase which, which we, 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 we can expect if we, if we heat our up or we, uh, we, or we compress the hadronic matter to very, to, 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 uh, to very high values here. Uh, we, we, we need or we hope to understand the properties of this new state of matter. Uh, we, we expected this new state of matter a couple of decades ago from the QCD and so on, but we have no idea about its properties. Nowadays, we are participating in international, uh, in, uh, international activities on understanding, uh, for example, the critical temperature. We don't know exactly how, how high is it. The degrees of freedom, the equation of a state, and so on. And so the last very important one is the transport properties. What is the heat conductivity? What is the electric conductivity? What is the viscosity of this new state of matter? For us, still black box. Um, OK. Uh, just here, I'm flashing uh, the, the, uh, the history of how we, we joined this Alice. But I can also switch, uh, or can also uh, make it very fast and come here to signing a memorandum of understanding. This was happened two years ago uh, at CERN. You can see here the, the director of CERN, and he, he was at the time the president of the Academy of Science, Egyptian Academy of Science, Dr. Magid Sherbini. Um, for example, uh, to, to understand how huge is Alice here. Yeah. Alice uh, in, uh, includes uh, 33 countries, about more than 100 institutions, for, uh, and working for uh, 1,500 members, for example, yeah. This is a map of, of, of Alice nowadays, including Egypt, and Egypt and, Af and South Africa are the only two countries uh, for, from the African continent. Uh, our plan for, for Alice is a very long-term plan, yeah. Uh, currently, we are running a specific physical problem now, but we hope to, to go to another step and to understand the cosmological implication of of what we, un what, what we are, uh, what we are uh, understanding, or what we have learned from, from, this, uh, from this experiment. The uh, ultimate goal for us is to understand the properties of the QGB. Okay, another, another facility, as I said to you, this is Nika, is at, uh, in, in Russia. Uh, Nika is not very high uh, energetic uh, facility, but it is very high pressure one, I mean, a, a, a dense one. And this is very important to, to go to, to, to high density. It's now under construction. I mean, the, the, it's expected to, 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 uh, to, to be commissioned in 2019, 2020. We are to join it, it's very important because it enables us to build up some parts of the detector or to convince the community of this uh, facility to run uh, uh, some experiments according to our our theoretical predictions, yeah. Uh, to understand it here, are two predictions, yeah, sent, or two proposals sent to Nika to convince the community to run some experiment in order to understand these, these two proposals. Okay. Um, it's not a huge one. As I said, energy is, is low to uh, about 10 GeV, but the density is very high. And the, uh, the, the particle which we, we, we can accelerate are um, varying from from elementary one, almost elementary one, protons, to very, very heavy one, to uranium, for example. Okay. Just here, a picture about this complex you can see here. And now they are building magnets, very, very new technology here they are building there. This picture was taken two weeks ago. Okay. Um, 
for, for, for at this uh, facility, uh, we are interested in the so-called multi-purpose detector. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, will, I have to finish. Okay. I can also um, switch to here. Just uh, it was in a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, signing protocol to, to let Egypt uh, be part of this NICA uh, facility. Uh, I was there representing Egypt, and at the end, we have it. Uh, for Germany, uh, for, for the German facility, the called FAIR, we also have planned to join the so-called compact baryon, uh, baryon matter, or baryonic matter. Um, also, again, heavy ion collision at high energy, we, we can understand the, Q, the QCD matter uh, in a better way. Okay, just here, uh, flash, uh, here uh, uh, slides about this facility, and the... Uh, this also, this facility is also under construction. It's not running red. It's planned for 2018, something like this here. To join it is very important to, to cook the food, for example. I mean, the, the physical food. Okay. For, CM, for CPM, uh, I just fl I flash this one. Um, the Brookhaven National Laboratory, it's, uh, it's called REC. Um, we, are, we are already a member of this uh, STAR uh, Star collaboration. You can see Egypt is also here uh, appearing in this map, and here the number of people who are, people who are joining it under the name of this WL Cup. Okay, uh, just here the physics of the star, which we can for future. Uh, we are also um, in contact with uh, the uh, particle physics community around the world to be part of even of the uh, future facilities. Just here I'm flashing the so called. Uh, uh, um, linear, um, um, uh, this is called CLEC, Compact Linear Collider, which is, is, now, uh, is, now, uh, under, uh, is now is now planned, yeah, and uh, it's, it's going to use a new technology, very new one technology, uh, not even implemented in, uh, at LHC it's, uh, himself, yeah. Uh, uh, each of you, maybe, or many of you are also, this is the, the ring of LHC, which is 27 kilometer. The next ring, which is now, uh, plant is either 80 or 100 kilometer. I mean, the, uh, the, the European uh, Center for Theoretical Physics is planning to build another rank uh, around Geneva uh, f with, uh, with a s circumference of about 100 kilometer and energy of, one, of 100 TeV. Uh, for future, I mean, just here, roadmap, what we, we, what we have done f since the since, uh, since 70s of last century till 20, uh, 2020 is here for the uh, Lipton Collider. It's another one. I mean, Lipton Collider is another one. I'm just talking about Hadron Collider. Lipton Collider gives us uh, new, new physics here. Okay. Um, the message is that despite the obstacles which we have in Egypt, many, or many obstacles we have, Egyptian scientists are competence capable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and I would like to first also thank the uh, TUAS uh, Arab uh, Region Office and the Alexandria Library for providing this opportunity for me to speak to you. This hasn't been the first time that I've been speaking in this event, and I'm not I, I must apologize uh, for standing between you and your lunch, but uh, because of the very interesting presentations we had earlier this morning, we had to uh, make up some time, and I will try and make it as short as possible. I'm not going to tell you a long story about my uh, uh, professional life, but I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about my experience over the last 15 years of establishing, uh, building uh, a center of excellence uh, in an area that I think probably uh, not, uh, not many of you are from that background of economics, so we'll probably shift a little bit to uh, a, a, a different field. And, uh, and when, you know, the, the, the story of establishing this center of excellence in, uh, when I was recruited in 1997 by the University of Pretoria to establish a program in environmental economics and build capacity in environmental economics and policy analysis in, in, in Africa. Now, the, 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 at that time, um, not just in this field of environmental economics and policy, which was new at, 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 the, in, in, at the time, start, the interest has started growing in the 90s. 
in natural resource uh, management and environmental economics and policy. But uh, what happened is during the 70s and the 80s, there was a reasonable investment and spending and attention from the national governments in building capacity in scientific research and training of people in post, especially sending them overseas for postgraduate training programs. But there was also a, a significant support from donor organizations and, and, and assistance to uh, sort of scholarships from different governments to send people to the north. Mainly the main source in, in capacity building in these areas was you know, people coming from with degrees, postgraduate degrees uh, from the north, so Europe, US, and, and Australia. But you know, by the 90s, uh, these investments and spending and attention uh, from the national governments, even from the donor assistance uh, agencies has declined. And the cost has become very high to send people to, um, to the north to uh, pursue studies in the postgraduate studies in, 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 in all kinds of fields. And at that time, the uh, interest in environmental issues have become uh, uh, large. So there was a gap. And there was no alternative uh, program available in the region. When I mean, when I say the region, I mean in, in Africa, to provide a specialized degree training in this field. And they were all, except for very few co for courses taught at very few places in universities at a very low level, introductory, honors degree courses, one or two courses, and and at best, there was a program that was beginning with the an institution called the um, African Economic Research Consortium a collaborative master's degree that teaches only two courses of, of electives. There was no specialization uh, degree training in, 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 on the continent. And uh, except for also short uh, non-degree training courses provided by networks, environmental economics networks established at that time, I think it's like that, you know, a one week, two week training, uh, non-degree training uh, networks like the environmental economics network for Eastern and Southern Africa and the resource accounting network. So there were a few networks. And then the capacity that was available, there were very few people at that time specialized in this field who came from, as I said, the north. And they were really scattered. One person in, you know, the country by himself or herself uh, without a critical mass to really uh, work together and provide uh, they, they also lacked, you know, uh, availability of senior people in the field to provide mentorship and 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 and, and uh, guidance um, uh, through their their career. So so they were really scattered and and f uh, basically isolated and and um, uh, dispersed throughout the continent. Uh, that is the time when the University of Pretoria recruited me to. Uh, they have seen the demand for this and the need for, you know, and, and was recruited to establish this program uh, where we started in 1997 a postgraduate degree training program in environmental economics and policy analysis. And uh, after that, we have seen in very rapidly in a few, about few years, very rapid growth in demand for this uh, type of training, for, especially from Africa. And that in about two or three years, that led the Senate of the University to establish to transform the postgraduate program into a center for environmental economics and policy analysis in Africa, which is SIPA, which is a center that exists and, and running today, and with a mission of building capacity uh, in scientific research uh, and, you know, in, in the field of environmental economics and policy, and at the same time, um, increase awareness uh, and sensitize uh, practitioners and policymakers in this area of environmental management and that natural resource management and environmental economics and policy. <clears throat> and so we had two programs that support capacity building, especially in degree training in environmental economics and policy. One of them was a resident MSCC and PhD program at the University of Pretoria. I will speak about that a little bit later. And then we have established, because the capacity at that time was only by myself and another colleague, so we could not really uh, provide support the demand from this big demand from all over uh, the, the continent. So we have established something that we call a collaborative regional master's program. Uh, in 2002, with the funding from Rockefeller Foundation to complement this uh, capacity at SIPA and also promote, uh, you know, pool resources in the region of this one or two people sitting in different places, feeling isolated, and, and create an environment where they can collaborate and work together. 
and, uh, and, 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 and support regional institutional capacity building uh, so that, you know, create an environment that will make these individuals who are scattered around to feel and work together as one family. And um, the program focused mainly at, on Eastern and Southern, Central and Southern Africa. What happened in that program that the students, they don't have to all come to the University of Pretoria uh, uh, postgraduate program. They, they registered their home universities for their master's degree, but they come for three months of, uh, you know, joint electives facility that we teach, uh, during which uh, specialized, four specialized, uh, specialization courses in environmental economics and policy at the University of Pretoria. We, with assistance and collaboration with lecturers from these different uh, countries and institutions. Uh, that program ran for about four years from 2002 to 2005. And during that time, we have uh, trained 85 master's students uh, in, in this program. Then the program and the curricula of the program was adopted and continues to be part as, uh, of, of a new uh, collaborative master's program that's been introduced in applied economics in the region, uh, coordinated by the African Economic Research Consortium. And uh, it's one of the specialization fields in that program. So it continues, but it has been managed and taken over by another institution, another program. And uh, in that program, just to give you an example of the departments and countries participating, universities, Macri University in Uganda, University of Pretoria, University of Nairobi, University of Dar es Salaam, and University of Sequin in, in, in Tanzania, Natal, uh, all the way to Zambia and Mozambique and Mauritius. Then we had and we still have, we still run what we call the resident uh, postgraduate training program in environmental economics and policy at our center in the University of Pretoria. Uh, by this year, that program has produced uh, 19, uh, this, these are people who are specialized, they, we, we, you could call them uh, natural resource or environmental economists, and, and, and they're very specialized in, in this field, not economists, agriculture economists, or other economists. So there are 19 uh, master, uh, graduate with 19 master's degrees and 24 PhD degrees, 50% uh, of, the, of the master's are, um, you know, from um, female students and 30% male students. And so I would say that uh, we have so far produced more than half the capacity of, in this field of specialization of people with postgraduate degree specialization in this field that are available on the continent right now. And all of them are employed in national, international, regional organizations working in Africa. Currently we have about 16 master's students currently enrolled in the MSc program and 17 PhD programs. Um, almost all of these, uh, uh, especially the PhD uh, students, were sponsored through a scholarship uh, through the center. Now, SIP also provides other, uh, uh, you know, uh, institutional capacity support uh, uh, elements and components. So we have a faculty development fellowships. We do sponsor PhD scholarships, as I said. We do sponsor fellows who come and visit either SIPA and spend some time as a sabbatical. Uh, uh, at one of the African universities or with us at SIPA or even go to Europe or some of the other collaborating institutions with us, visiting fellows, uh, fellows from African academic institutions and research institutions who want to spend their sabbatical uh, somewhere, we sponsor that. We do provide training of uh, trainers, workshops, we do, uh, we do, we do, for the last uh, about eight years, we, 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 we uh, give grants on competitive basis, research grants. A grant is about 15,000 US dollars, and we give about eight every year for uh, support research. Um, on competitive basis, as I said, people do submit proposals, and we do organize research workshops to provide guidance and, 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 and mentorship using uh, 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 experts, international experts, and renowned people in this field, and, and, and people from the region uh, to serve as resource persons in our teaching program and training and non-degree training programs. Also provide uh, mentorship and advice and guidance to uh, the researchers doing, um, uh, you know, this thing. And, 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 and the program is actually mainly funded by CEDA, uh, Sweden and IDRC of Canada. Uh, it's, it's, it's a major capacity building uh, program uh, for African in this field. Uh, of environmental economics and policy supports also providing libraries with uh, textbooks, key textbooks, and, and access to 
uh, publications and networking. Um, other offerings of, of, uh, of CEPA for, to, to the professional community that's developing in the region includes, net, as I said, networking, newsletter, website, policy briefs, and, and, and publication series, and uh, various types of non-degree and degree training. The type of research that has been carried under the center so far is mainly based, uh, the core is based on the uh, uh, postgraduate uh, degrees, thesis research, masters and PhD research, produced quite a bit of publications. And then a fac the faculty uh, of the center, the independent collaborative research with a number of affiliates, those who come and, and spend with us time as visiting fellows or postdocs. And in our, you know, I would estimate that there is about more than 60 percent of all the published, refereed published publications in this field that's coming from Africa are now produced by the center, SIPA. Uh, so so it's, it's built quite a bit of, of, of a capacity over the last five years. The average uh, number of publications, uh, refereed publications per full-time full equivalents per year uh, for the SIPA faculty was more than three refereed publications. It's become a leading uh, major continental research uh, a uh, an institution that uh, really provides quite a bit of service to a number of clients, consulting, research, and training, capacity building uh, activities for a number of organizations. Just to give you an idea about the examples of the types of research projects, uh, the key, you know, these are not individual research projects, I'm just giving you examples of research projects that involve many countries in the region like the, um, you know, if, if, if you really uh, Google search for environmental accounting in Africa, you will find SIPA all over the place. Uh, probably 90% of the publications in this field <coughs> was produced by um, a major uh, research activity that was, we have uh, coordinated for more than nine years, uh, provide quite a bit of capacity building to providers of, you know, national, uh, this is an area of called natural resource and environmental accounting. Uh, quite a bit of capacity building, and, and, and this has been institutionalized in a number of countries because it's uh, provided the, the support and training for uh, government agencies that really produce and generate this type of information. Um, and then a number of uh, postgraduate degrees have been uh, completed as, as part of this. Uh, lots of publications, if you Google search, as I said, you'll find, uh, you know, most of the literacy in Africa on this coming from the center. This was be, has been in collaboration with a number of institutions like the Bayer Institute of Ecological Economics of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, the World Bank, Columbia University, and funding from CEDA Sweden and MacArthur USAID. And then a major other project that we have coordinated and led was the on climate change impacts and adaptation in Africa involving 11 countries in Africa. Egypt was one of the, of the key countries where we have done this also. <clears throat> quite a bit of literature and publications and capacity building and degrees were completed under this. Also, if you Google search climate change impacts uh, on, on agriculture in Africa, you'll find probably more, uh, lots of books and publications, probably 70-80% uh, of that coming from the center. A um, major activity that the center does is doing research on water that is in collaboration with many agencies and donors and institutions around the world. And uh, I, I'm not sure if the uh, TOAS or the Arab region office will make this slide available uh, for people so that it just save you time. But if you go to the um, website of SIPA, if you Google search SIPA, you will find the information there you'll find quite a bit of details. And, and, I, and, and, and to save you time, I don't want to keep you <coughs> from your lunch. Um, but I just want to mention that, uh, you know, at this stage, SIBA has become uh, really a representative in this field for Africa. It represents Africa. Almost all the key international science councils, from the CGIR Science Council to the Global uh, Environment fund uh, science panel, uh, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment Science Panel, uh, a number of key international science panels that Sub-Saharan Africa is usually represented by uh, SIPA. One thing that concerns this region is that SIPA played a very major role in creating what we call MINANI, which is the Middle East and North Africa Network for Environmental Economics, which uh, I, th I believe 
used to be hosted with the Alexandria Library, and I, I believe it continues to be hosted uh, uh, here. And they provide similar activities, They're not necessarily degree training, but all the other non-degree training activities, workshops, uh, uh, the Minani provides, and, and we, we, we have really uh, supported and, and played a very key role in creating that. The staff and funding of SIPA, last slide is that the, 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 the center is part of the university, so the core budget for the center comes from the University of Pretoria, but we do have, as you have seen, a number of complementary funding supporting different kinds of research capacity building activities from scholarships for PhD training, uh, visiting fellowships, postdoc fellowships, uh, research grants, a number of institutions that uh, I, I mentioned, and the staff of the center, we have a, you know, a, a full professor, uh, that, that, that's uh, the, the director of the center, and one senior lecturer last, uh, in the last two years we have added another senior lecturer and a postdoc and we do have, we run the center administratively with the assistance of a half-time admin assistant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this interesting lecture and uh, now I will open uh, the forum for questions. In front of us here we have more than 100 years experience accumulated on the board here. So uh, the question is for everyone, including the uh, Mr. Chairperson, which is uh, what you give a, uh, a message or a one telex or fax or whatever one line to, because you have many here young ones, excluding myself, the uh, postdocs and the young uh, students. So in one line, each one of you, what, what you would uh, tell them? I will give uh, the chance for my colleagues to talk first and I'll finish it. What is the message you want to drive? In one line? Two lines. Okay. Um, probably two words. Love what you do. <laughs> for me, I think um, networking, collaborating, and rationally thinking. Thank you. <laughs> For me, they do it daily, but don't do it half-heartedly. I think uh, I said it uh, in the beginning of my introduction that today's world is world of science, Today's world is a world of hard work, and we are seeing the amount of knowledge and information ga gathering worldwide. And we should be part of it, otherwise we'll be far behind the world. I think Mohammed, Dr. Faham gave us this, uh, I mean, uh, question in order to tell me in the session it's time for lunch. So from this point, uh, I would like to thank all my colleagues who spoke, and we really enjoyed their speeches.